What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwit, and I am back again today bringing you guys another 2014 fantasy football season preview here. And today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the running back position, specifically looking at running backs for PPR, aka points per reception leagues. If you're not familiar with what a point per reception league is, it's a very simple concept. So imagine a quarterback throws a pass to a player. If your player is that guy who catches the pass, you automatically get a point for that, and then you still get the same amount of points that you normally would for receiving yardage and touchdowns in a standard scoring league. So basically what it does is it helps out the players who maybe catch shorter passes but might get maybe more first downs, for example, and it definitely makes a big difference in the running back position. So that's one that I want to take a look at specifically today. And what I want to do is start off at number 10 with one of the players who is new onto this list. He did not make the list for standard scoring top 10. And that player is second year Cincinnati running back Giovanni Bernard. Now, Giovanni Bernard is a great example of a running back who has more valuable uh, more value, excuse me, in a PPR league than he does in a standard scoring league. Unlike Alfred Morris who was the number 10 running back on my standard scoring video, Bernard is actually more than just a pure runner. While he showed flashes of great skills running the ball, he actually only had 695 yards on the ground in his rookie season. But where he shined was that he also made 56 receptions for 514 yards. This is a big time number, especially when you consider that he was splitting snaps with Ben Jarvis Green Ellis throughout the season. Now, Green Ellis himself is likely to lose his role in the offense this season. He was not very productive at all this past year. And Jeremy Hill, the talented rookie running back that they drafted, is expected to be a very big part of this offense. But with that being said, I still expect that Bernard is going to see the field more in terms of the two players. I think that Bernard is going to be probably the 60% and Jeremy Hill's probably going to be 40% of the of the snaps. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bernard take 200 carries himself while also catching 60 or so passes, which could very well mean another nice big yardage season. I'm expecting Giovanni Bernard to approach 1,300 total yards this season so long as he stays healthy. And if he does, he is going to be a very nice running back one for the person who who decides to take him there, or if he slips, a running back two for somebody who's very, very wise. Moving on now to number nine, and we have a player who was the same score, their same ranking, excuse me, on my non PPR list as he is on my PPR list, and that is Doug Martin. Now, Doug Martin is coming off of a serious injury, and his offensive line has taken a step back in terms of skill, but that's kind of why he is more toward the bottom of this list at number nine versus potentially being a top five player if he were to have those things in his favor. Now, keep in mind that Martin was a top five overall pick in many drafts just a season go. The skills are there. There's a new coaching regime in, ta regime in Tampa Bay, and Lovey Smith has already proclaimed that he is going to use uh, Doug Martin as the bell cow. He used that phrase specifically, bell cow, and I think that that is definitely something to keep in mind because he is going to touch the ball a lot. I fully expect him to touch the ball 250 times this season, and I think that he'll probably catch somewhere between 40 and 50 passes, so that's a nice little bonus for PPR leagues. Martin is a guy that it, it, he definitely carries some risk heading into the season, but he has that high-end potential, I think, that makes him somebody that I would be targeting near uh, the end of the running back one class here. I think, like I said, he is my number nine running back in PPR and non-PPR leagues. Uh, I don't really think his value changes is a whole lot between the two of them. But again, Martin does have the potential to be a top five player if things roll out right for him with the rest of his team. Moving on to number eight, and we have a player who kind of takes a couple steps back here in PPR formats, and that is Seattle Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch. Now, I still like Lynch as a low-end running back one even in PPR leagues, but the fact that he has only averaged 29 catches per season since coming to Seattle is a bit of a concern. Now, it's worth noting that his 36 catches that he made for in 2013 were his highest total since 2008 when he was a member of the Bills, but I think that we should be expecting him to get back around like the 25 to 30 range 
change in 2014. Now, 30 isn't an awful number, but if we assume that most of the other running backs that being or that are being drafted around him are averaging closer to 50 catches, that's a 20 point difference in PPR leagues. That's something that's absolutely very con- uh, important to consider. It is a three to four touchdown difference between these two players if you were to compare that. So that's something to, uh, that's a little bit tough to swallow, I think. And that's the reason why Lynch drops a couple spots down from number six in a standard scoring league to number eight in my PPR rankings. Next on the list is a guy who moves up a spot from his standard scoring ranking of eight up to number seven in PPR, and that is Dallas Cowboys running back DeMarco Murray. Now, Murray caught 53 passes in just 14 games this past season while also rushing for 1,100 yards and scoring a total of 10 touchdowns. Murray is a good bet to catch nearly 60 passes this season as long as he stays healthy. I believe that the Cowboys, like I've said in other videos, I think that they're going to pass the ball more this season, which could mean that Murray ends up getting less runs overall, but that still means that he could potentially be a big-time contributor in the passing game. Now, of course, there's a major question mark about him, and that is, of course, the fact that he has had such a rough injury history. He was injured in college, and he's never played a full season in the NFL, but he's always been productive when he's been out there on the field. He's a big risk, but he could also be a huge reward for whoever drafts him this season. DeMarco Murray is going to see the ball plenty, even if he doesn't run the ball as much. He's still going to catch tons of passes, and he's going to be a very valuable member of this Dallas Cowboys offense, which I expect to take a step forward in terms of total production this year. You love to have running backs and good offenses, and I think that's what DeMarco Murray is going to be for the Dallas Cowboys this year. I like him as a low-end running back one, or I guess we're getting to the point where it's basically a mid-level running back one. Uh, The risk, like I said, is there, but I think that the reward makes him more than worth it at the number seven ranking for running backs. Now, number six on my list, and I said this in a previous video in my standard scoring running backs rankings, this is a player that I am planting my flag on this season, and I am sticking to it, and that is Denver Broncos second year running back, Monty Ball. No, Sean Moreno made 60 receptions in 2013 in the same role that I expect Monty Ball to play this season. And while it's true that Monty Ball has never proven that he's a great pass rusher or pass catcher, excuse me, I do consider that Moreno had never really produced a high number of receptions prior to 2013. His career high, actually, prior to 2013 was just 37. So he went from 37 all the way up to 60 just because he was in that Denver offense that was so fast-paced, that threw the ball so much, and Moreno ended up being a top-five fantasy running back just because of that in in all scoring formats. Monty Ball should easily approach 50 catches, and I don't think he takes any steps back in PPR formats. You could even make the case that he might take a step forward. I would, I'm right on the verge right now of taking him from my number six running back position and moving him up to number five ahead of the next player on this list, which is a guy that I compare Monty Ball to a lot in terms of situation and and everything really. And that is of course, Eddie Lacey of the Green Bay Packers. Now, Lacey doesn't really move up or down my rankings as far as the PPR format goes. Um, but he doesn't really have the high-end reception ability that some of the other top backs do. He did make 35 catches for 257 yards this past season in his rookie year, but that's probably about what we're going to get from him in the receiving game. Now, that doesn't mean that Lacey isn't still a top five or six fantasy running back going into the year, but I think that this scoring format really doesn't benefit him. It doesn't necessarily hurt him a whole lot, but if anything, it does bump him down maybe one slot. I think I might consider moving Monty Ball up depending on how I'm feeling at a certain point in the drafts um, and what I see throughout the rest of the season. Monty Ball is uh, definitely, like I said, improving his draft stock in the preseason. He caught a couple of passes on Saturday night and uh, he is definitely looking good as a runner as well. Eddie Lacy, like I said, is in a very similar situation in Green Bay. Both players are in a very nice offense. Both guys are pretty much the uncontested running back one in the offense. And unfortunately for both of them, they're both in offenses where the team is going to pass a ton. But 
that does mean that there are going to be plenty of opportunities for them to score. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see both of these guys in the top 10 as far as, or excuse me, in double digit touchdowns. I, I would almost guarantee that both of them finish in the top 10 if they remain healthy this season. So uh, that's why I've got Eddie Lacy ranked at number five, Monty Ball ranked at number six. And then we move on to what I consider to be the elite crop of running backs starting at number four. And this is a guy who I had ranked as my number two running back as far as standard scoring leagues go. But this is the lowest that I can ever remember having Adrian Peterson in my preseason rankings ever since his rookie season. And that is, uh, like I said, it's something that I am really surprised to see out of myself. But the reason for that is because Peterson has never been a high-end pass catcher. And even in a new offense coached by North Turner, where other guys have caught quite a few passes, I still think Peterson up, Peterson's upside is about 45 catches. I still want to reiterate, though, that I believe Adrian might be the safest pick of all the fantasy running backs this year. I think he's the most talented player as far as running backs go in the entire league. And just because he doesn't catch as many passes as the other guys above him, that's the only reason that he isn't a top three back. He does take a slight step back in this type of format. And although I expect him again to put up double digit touchdowns, we just can't really expect that he's going to be throwing or catching for, you know, 50, 60 passes when he, we haven't seen that in recent years. He's been in the 20s and the 30s for the most part. And like I said, even though there, he's going to be in a new offense, I just don't necessarily believe that he's going to take that giant step forward for PPR formats that some people are expecting him to. There is a guy, however up here at number three, who takes a nice step forward in PPR formats. Matt Forte moves up to the number three overall player on my list in PPR formats, largely due to the fact that he is one of the absolute best pass catching running backs in the entire NFL. He has averaged 57 receptions over his six-year career per season, and he's coming off the best receiving season that he's ever had, where he made 74 catches. Now, 74 catches is probably the ceiling for him, but if he even comes close to that, that will give him a huge advantage over guys like Adrian Peterson and Eddie Lacy, who are likely only to catch 30 to 40 passes. In PPR formats, Forte legitimately has the chance to finish as the top scoring fantasy running back this season. He doesn't possess a whole lot of risk, so I do like that, of course. And I think that with the Chicago offense continuing to improve, they're continuing to pass the ball, there should be another opportunity for Matt Forte to potentially uh, potentially approach that double-digit touchdown total again. I do think that he is probably going to be more around like the 7 to 10 range versus the 10 to 12 range that he was this past season. But at the same time, though, Forte makes up for it with all those receptions. He has a ton of rushing yardage to go with it. And I still think that he is a top three fantasy running back in PPR formats. Number two is the top scoring fantasy running back from the 2013 season. And that is, of course, Kansas City's Jamal Charles. Charles torched defenses for nearly 2,000 yards of offense and led all non-quarterbacks with 19 total touchdowns on the year. Charles was even better in PPR formats where his 70 receptions just served to extend the lead that he had over all the other running backs. Now, I have Charles ranked as my number three running back in standard scoring leagues because I believe that Kansas City's offense is in line for a slight regression. But at the same time, even if he takes a step back, he is still a rock-solid running back one who has 70 catch upside. Alex Smith loves to check the ball down, and Charles will continue to benefit from that. If you want to take him as the number one overall player in your PPR league, I don't have a single problem with that, but I just wouldn't expect him to approach the 20 touchdown total like he had last year, so that's why I see him taking a little bit of a step back in terms of his fantasy production overall. Still, though, like I said, Jamal Charles is an absolute beast. He is 100% a comfortable guy to draft for fantasy football. If you take him number one, number two, number three, number four overall, wherever you end up getting him, he is going to produce for you. He is going to be awesome. He is an absolute monster, and there is no reason to have any worries about him going into the season. Now, number one on the list, and this is a guy who is the number one player on my list overall. For any position in standard scoring leagues, and of course, he is also going to be the number one overall player for 
for PPR leagues for me, and that is Philadelphia running back LaShawn McCoy. And guys, he is the kind of guy who possesses the elite skill and he's in an elite offense, which is the ideal formula for massive fantasy numbers. McCoy was the only player to surpass 2,000 yards of offense in 2013, and he seems like the best bet to potentially repeat that type of total in 2014. What's even better from McCoy is that I believe he could improve on his 11 touchdown total from a season ago. He actually scored 20 touchdowns back in 2011, and the Philadelphia offense is going to give him plenty of chances to get into the end zone. McCoy should haul in somewhere between 50 to 60 receptions this season, which does give him a nice little boost in PPR formats, but it's his overall game that makes him my number one player regardless of the scoring format. I absolutely love LaShawn McCoy. I think that he is the best option if you're at the number one pick. I would take LaShawn McCoy just about every single time. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button. If you have any questions or if you want to leave a comment, if there is a guy that I missed on the list that should be on here, let me know in the comment section below. And guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you press that subscribe button because there's going to be more fantasy football com uh, content coming from here. And if you're enjoying it, make sure, of course, that you let me know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.